Now, Robin, in addition to some brilliant visual effects work um, and directing, you are also a writer. Yes. And, uh, you know, I've written the things that I've produced, but, you know, like, I've always had a problem of sitting down, you know, and going, you know, like really getting it done. You know what I mean? Because sure. it's kind of like, I find myself, you know, I have this idea and I kind of like have an idea of where I want it to go. And then somewhere, you know, the end of the first act, the beginning of the second act, I get lost. And I think actually it was a suggestion from you that gave me the key. And that was, you know, if you have the idea, write the ending first. And with this latest thing that I'm writing, I tried that. And I wrote the end of it completely first. And let me tell you something, man. Starting to write that from the beginning, knowing where I'm going with it, makes all the difference. It does. I'm, I'm actually working with a writing partner, um, writing what I intend to be my first feature that I direct. And... I say, anybody can write a first act. We always write first acts, and then we get, like, we just don't know where to go. So have an idea about it. Have an idea how it's going to start. Start writing a second act. That's what they call in the, the Save the Cat thing, the fun and game section. And, you know, whether you're just on Save the Cat or, you know, you've gone beyond it to other screenwriting books or want to expand anything, you know, the second act is is key and the second act should be fun the second act is the trailer act that's what they put in the trailer so if you can put all that enthusiasm and energy into your second act write it through to the end have an idea have an outline write it through to the end then go back and make a super tight super focused first act that it'll pay off it'll be not quite a bookend but it'll be um It'll be the seed you plant. Every single thing that happens should come up later. And if it doesn't, is it superfluous? Do you need that stuff? You know, I always got hung up on my first acts, writing things in and writing scenes in that I really wanted to happen, but maybe it wasn't right at that point in time. Maybe it had to come later, but because you get stuck, you just you can't move forward. Oh, you're, you're absolutely right. And... Uh... Like I said, writing in a lot of ways is like acting, because there are a bunch of different schools. I mean, one of the first books I ever read on screenwriting was a book by someone called Sid Field. And he basically, and basically the book was one of his writing classes in school. And they basically started with the character. Okay, I've got a character, his name is Andrew Franey. He's married, he's got two kids. What does he do for a living? Does he like his job? Does he like, you know? And they basically built the story out of that. And then, you know, and they were like, and like acting, you know, where you have, you've got Stanislavski method, you've got Lee Strasberg's version of the Stanislavski method, you've got Sanford Meisner method, you know, mm. it's kind of everything like that. And I think you just got to find something in there that works for you. But what you were just, like I said, for me, you gave me the key. Everything you just said works perfectly for me because it keeps me on a balance of knowing where I'm going. And I think... One of the things you said in there is key. When you do it that way, uh, a lot of times the ideas that you've had in the beginning that don't make it in there probably are better off having been edited out like that in a natural way. Yeah, and, and that was, we had a quick phone call, and then I heard you had pretty much outlined or started writing your feature script. So what was, what was the turnaround on that? Uh... The turnaround moment was we had a phone call, and I just, you know, and I remember we talked about it, and, you know, and then when you mentioned it, about, you know, like I, I thought about it for a while, I gave it some thought, and I said, yeah. So I had basically gotten the story. I mean, I, I wanted to do a feature. I had just read about a feature that three, that two English brothers did called Cosmos. And it's basically, a, it's, it's kind of a sci-fi story that people that are out, you know, like listening for uh, different signals coming from outer space and they find something. But the crux of it is they shot it with a black magic pocket camera, not the 4K or 6K, but the original black magic pocket camera, you know, which was just an HD camera. 
And they basically had three people that were in the cast. They had basically two locations. I mean, a location in the woods outside and one location on the inside of the car where they were listening. And, you know, that's pretty much it. It took them, like, a long time to get it done. And they said sometimes their mom came out and did crew for them. <laughs> but the thing was, again, I did, they actually got, I saw, I was blown away by the trailer of it. And they actually got distribution, international distribution. Wow. And a lot of really respected cinematographers thought they shot it on an Ari, you know, on an on an area or you know even one part of it on a Panavision camera yeah so I you know I was thinking you know again they followed all those rules of doing the first feature a you know like small cast and you know like a minimum of locations so with all that in mind I kind of formulated the idea of the one that I was doing and then I was going to go I'm going to go with this and then you and I talked about starting with the end and I thought about the end, what the story was, what I wanted to do. And once that was in place, everything, like you said, just popped in. So the turnaround was like really quick. It's kind of like, you know, I was looking for that last piece of the puzzle and you handed it to me. And uh, Yeah, it was, like a, it was like a matter of a few days, though. And then you, you had an outline, which is is the movie. Yeah, I mean, it was, but I mean, it was just that, you know, I can't, like I said, I cannot praise that way of doing things enough. I mean, I thank you for, like, giving me that, because it took something that was, like, really painful for me and made it easy. Yeah, it's definitely helped me out, and, you know, I, I'm i partially making these um, videos and podcasts because this is the kind of content I watch. You know, I want to hear about the way that people approach things the different ways and see what clicks, see what I can incorporate, and from a bunch of conglomeration of different things, this was kind of the way I felt that I should approach writing this feature. And it was amazing. We had, we, we pretty much, I think, within a couple, like, 45-minute Skype sessions, we had Act 2. We had all the characters, which was the tough one. Um, then we did Act 3, and then, you know, we made a loose outline for Act 1. Um, referencing the things that had happened before. So it's almost like you're working at it like a Christopher Nolan way where you're jumping back and forth. And, oh, this can go here, this can go here. Um, right. It's a way to work a little more non-linearly to be able to see Act 1s, 2, and 3 maybe on like laid out in bullet points on like a page or two. You know, it's easy to just jump up here and say, okay, I can reference what happens here. I can foreshadow it. Yeah, and that to me is what the interesting part of this is. You know, like in a more traditional way of writing, it's kind of you're letting the things that you've already written, which is sort of like the past, hmm. the early acts, drive what's going to happen in the future. But, you know, it's funny. When you know what's going to happen at the very end, that's driving how you get there. And that can make it easy. To me, it makes it easier, but a lot more interesting, too. It's more focused. Right. Exactly. Again, like you said, the superfluous stuff kind of like goes by the wayside. And right. And it's getting you directly where you want to be. Well, it's one of those things where, like, sometimes when I sit down to write, I will write freeform. And I'll write stuff that just goes off. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, it, it may never come back. And maybe it's good to get that out. Well, but now it's in my script. You never know. You might get another story out of that, something totally different. You, you know? may. You or may. A, but a the, the tricky part and the part that you're going to have to spend hours brain of brain process on is, ooh, do I need this? I really like it. Can I, can I shift it? Can I incorporate it? Whereas starting with an outline is, this is going to happen, this is going to happen. If you have something superfluous, you know, maybe you make a note in a different document. But your outline is, is your structure. To say, this is going to happen here, this is going to happen here. Oh, I had this cool idea, but I don't know if it fits. Write it somewhere else. Write it in a, a text file called Maybe Ideas. <laughs> and you know what? That's what kind of like brings me to directing, especially when you're directing something that you've written. One of the things I know, one of the things I've always liked, and it's especially like in indie film, is that, you know, if you're open to have 
everybody, you know, like whether it's the DP, whether it's the actors, whether it's the guy moving the lights, you know, when they're part of the project to, you know, to be able to make suggestions and see things. And, right. you know, that sometimes work, because the one thing about it is, once you've written something, you are, like, so focused on what you've got down there, what you have to do. Sometimes you don't see other, like Bob Ross called the happy accidents that, you know, sure. come up on set. And I just, you know, and for, like, two examples, you know, one example, which is with you as the uh, DP on Paradox, which we're in production on. But, I mean, you know, like, I was looking at other things, and you just happened to see this, you know, the ornate kind of glass that was on the door, and the way the light hit it, and the way it had gone through, and you suggested, oh, we should have her, like, walking up this way. And, you know, I think that's going to be one of the key moments in the film, which, thank God you brought it up, because, you know, like, I didn't even notice that at the time. Right. Yeah, you know, it's different, different perspectives. Right? But because it's, you had the script... Because you you wrote it and you you're focused on the intention. This is what I need. So when I made a comment, you know, what if we try it this way? It gelled with your intention or it didn't. So well, yeah, you know like, what you know what you want to achieve. Right. I mean, like even you know, like and then Amanda made a uh, she made a suggestion which actually was a story suggestion, which I won't get into get into you know because. It's actually becomes kind of an integral little part of the story, but again, it was something that I was so into it. I didn't see with like fresh eyes, just came up and said, Well, why don't we do this or do that? And you know, and the hitman go, Yeah, why didn't I think of that? You know what I mean? Right. So when you know your story, you can be hyper focused on where it's going. And right. you know, maybe the way you get there, there are some nice things. If you listen to your your actors, your crew, um, I think if you just, if you, as a director, if you know what you want to achieve at the end of the day, right. you're less hyper-focused on the little details. I know. And that I just you want. Like to keep it, like on the set, I like to keep it open. I like, I love working and making it known to everybody. If you see something you think is going to work, or you see something that may just, you know, like say it, you know. All right. No, and, good uh, point. Well, thanks like so much, it. Robin. Appreciate you um, coming on. So... Where can we see your previous work? Where can we see my previous work? Well, The Mirror, we're still waiting on one more thing from a film festival before we release that, which I think we'll release on YouTube. And I know we've been talking about doing uh, with some of the work you have and other things that end up putting together like a little DVD. So that's going to be coming up. And Paradox... Uh, you know, one of the things that I'm planning to do like with like hopefully that we can make with a uh with an invited audience or like with what you know the different things we were shooting for this dvds have like it which would include alan sconza's run and you know one thing that you worked on with amanda is there's a little theater in newtown pa that you can actually rent to do things i want to have a little premiere and do that rent to see it before things go all out on the net oh so. okay all sorts of different types of releases you got physical you got theater um and the youtube yeah and so i'm like what i'm uh so to keep up with that although i haven't posted anything in a while if you look up ultra entertainment media productions on facebook and go to our facebook page there i will be a lot better about keeping people up with what's happening and when these things are going to come about and where you can find them. Perfect. And we'll have links to all those in the description. Robin Hunt, visual effects artist, writer, director, all around great guy. Thanks for being on the show and thanks for going Indie Depth. Okay. Thank you for having me, Andrew. Enjoy yourself. Stay safe and have a great day. You too.